So now we're going to look at how to graph logarithmic functions. So we talked about how exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverses. So if I'm looking at this exponential function y equals 2 to the x, and I want its inverse, which would be y equals log base 2 of x, then I can simply just take the coordinates of this exponential function and switch the domain and range. So I would take the x values and make them my new range and take the y values and make them my new domain. So here we've done that. We've taken the coordinates and we've switched the x and y values and now you can see what the general form of the logarithmic function would look like. Now remember the exponential functions have an asymptote of y equals zero, right? Now if I'm switching the domain and range, what do you think the asymptote is going to be for the logarithmic function? Well, just like everything else, we're switching x and y, so the new asymptote is going to be x equals zero. So the asymptote of the logarithmic function is x equals zero. And you can see this once we graph. So let's go ahead and connect the values here. And you can see that this function is going to continue to get very close to the y-axis Okay, but it's never actually going to touch it as the graph continues, so the end behavior will never actually touch it, but it'll get very, very, very close. Therefore, my asymptote is the y-axis, which has the equation x equals zero. And remember, all inverse functions are actually just reflected over this line, y equals x, so you can see the reflection very clearly here. So I'm sure there's more than two methods to graphing a logarithmic functions, but these are the two that I found to be the easiest. So the first method is to kind of treat the log as an inverse function and to go ahead and find its inverse, graph the inverse, and then at the very end switch the x and y coordinates. So if I take this logarithmic function log of 2 of x equals y, and I change that to log base 2 of y equals x, so that's, that's where we switch and we find the inverse. I'm going to go ahead and take the inverse function, rewrite it as an exponential function. These two now are inverse functions. So whenever I graph this guy right here, I'm just going to get a table of values and then switch them, and that will give me the coordinates of my new graph. Now the second method is to go ahead and take our logarithmic function, so y equals log base 2 of x, rewrite it in an exponential form. So if I rewrote this, this would say 2 to what power gives me x, so 2 to the y power equals x. And then, instead of plugging in for x, which is what we normally do, in this function here, it's actually easy to plug in for y. So we're going to go ahead and plug in values for y to get our x values, and then we're going to plot those on a graph. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've rewritten y equals log base 3 of x to exponential form. So that's 3 to the y equals x. Okay, and now I took values of y and I plugged in values for y to see what the value of x is, is that coordinate. All right, so 3 to the negative 2 power gives me 0.1 repeating, which is 1 ninth, right, because 3 to the negative 2 power, since that's a negative exponent, it flips over, so that's 1 ninth. 3 to the negative first power is going to be 1 third. 3 to the f 0 power is always 1. 3 to the first is 3. 3 to the second is 9. So now I have my coordinates. So let's go ahead and graph. So I have 1 ninth negative 2. So that's going to be very, very small. barely going to go over. I have one-third negative one, barely going to go over. Okay, it's hard to kind of graph these small values, but as long as you're labeling your coordinates, that's fine. One, zero. Three, one. And nine, two. Now, you can continue plugging in values for x if you don't see what's going to happen to the graph, but using your knowledge, 
that my asthmatope should be the y-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and graph my asthmatote here, which you should always do in your graph. You should be graphing the asthmatote. So this is x equals 0. You should label it also. And connecting these, we know we're going to get very close, but not quite touch. And I'm going to go off this way. All right. So this is going to be y equals log base 3 of x. And you, of course, would want to label all your coordinates. Now let's talk about domain and range. Okay. So domain of this function is going to be the range of its inverse, right? And the range of this function will be the domain of its inverse. Now looking at this graph, you can easily see that I'm not achieving anything over here, right? This is like a barrier line and I'm not having any values over here, which means I'm not getting any of these x values over here. So my x values are only going to be x greater than 0. Now remember, I can't be equal to 0 because that's my asthmatote. All right. Now range. Well, I'm going to be continuing to go down here forever and ever, and I'm going to continue to go up here forever and ever. So the range of this function is going to be all reals. Now this makes complete sense because for the exponential function, it's inverse. We normally had domain as all reals, and range was where we had our troubles. And the range always depended on the asymptote, just like it is here. So surprise, surprise, translating graphs of logarithmic functions is exactly like translating any other graph that we've ever looked at. So any other function that we've ever studied, the transformations are exactly the same. So when a here in front is bigger than 1, that's going to be a stretch on the graph. If it's between 0 and 1, it's going to be a compression. And if a is negative, it's a reflection over the x-axis. Whenever I have something added on the outside here, k, that's going to shift me up or down, plus k up, minus k down. Whenever I have something inside the parentheses here right next to my x, that's going to be a shift to the left or to the right. Left if I see a plus, right if I see a minus. So these are exactly the same as they were with the exponential function, as well as quadratics, and absolute value, and square root, and cube root. So now we're going to be translating this logarithmic function. So we always begin with the parent function. So y equals log base 3 of x. And we look at what happened to it. So this minus 3 here next to the x means that I shifted my graph right 3. And the plus 2 on the outside means I shifted up 2. Now what does that do to the coordinates? Well that means all the coordinates for x got 3 added to them and all the y coordinates got 2 added to them. So now I can create a new table of values for my new translated function. So now let's go ahead and plot these points. So 3.1 repeating 0, so just over to 3, past a little bit. 3.3 repeating 1. So I'm sorry, the first one was 3.1 repeating, and then 3.3 repeating, then 4, 2, 6, 3. And then 12, 4 is going to be off my graph, but it's going to be over here. Now it's going to be important for you to know the general shape of this graph. Now the original function had an asymptote of x equals 0, the y-axis. So by shifting the graph right 3, the asymptote also shifted 3 to the right. So it's important to go ahead and draw that in and label your asymptote. So we can see that our function will get very close to the asymptote but not pass it. Now if you wanted to pick more values, you could see that shape starting to appear. Now when we're talking domain and range, now remember, the domain of a logarithmic function is the range of the original function. So when we're looking at exponential functions, the range always dealt with how did y change. Well here it's about how did x change. So I shifted to the right 3, so x is going to be greater than 3. 
Now the range of the logarithmic function is always all real numbers. And you can see this very clearly in the graph because I will never achieve any x values over here that are less than 3 and I can't be equal to 3 because my asymptote is x equals 3. So go ahead and try graphing this logarithmic function. Remember you want to start with the parent function and then to graph the parent function you might want to refer to the exponential form of that and then you do your transformations. Now don't forget to do your domain and range as well as labeling your asymptote and your graph.